Made it. I made it. Saw him running late. I've been, whew, I've been running, 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 trying to um, take care of some business uh, before I get home. And I was trying to beat the clock, but I was running a little behind. But um, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for tuning in. And um, uh, this is a time to pray something, some things that have been going on. I've been sensing. And I've been aware of, and I've been noticing, let me turn this down. In the in the spirit, in the spirit, uh, the Bible lets us know that our, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and rulers uh, and of darkness of this world. The Bible tells us to put on the whole arm of God. Uh, one of the things that I one of the things that I've I've noticed, and I'm noticing, is that families are under attack, and there is a certain spirit. Uh, there, there are many spirits, but there are two specific spirits that I want to call by name and call out as we go into prayer. I just want to let you know that whatever it is that you're fighting, whatever it is that you're dealing with, God wants you to give it a name. Call it out. Call it out. Let it know that you recognize it and speak against it. If it's depression, call out depression and speak against it. Uh, it's his hurt. Call out hurt and speak against it, whatever it is. Uh, give it a name and speak and pull it down in the name of Jesus because the Bible says that God has given us power over all the power of the enemy. That means pain, sickness, hurt your past. If your past is your problem, if your past is what's beating you, uh, bless you, bless you, Jessica, bless you, bless you, bless you. Give it a name and call it out. Uh, and, and the thing that we must do what we need to be, be re-educated about. And David gave us a sort of a template on prayer. A lot of times when we pray, we pray cute, cute prayers. We pray, pray prayers that other people pray. We pray general prayers. But exactly how you're feeling, that's how God wants you to pray. If you're feeling tired, if you feel like you hate somebody, if you feel like doing something to somebody, God wants you to tell him exactly what you're going through at that moment. That's the only way that God can deliver you. If you notice that there are certain things that are coming up in your life, there's a reason why. The reason why things are coming up in your life that they might be dealt with. So God wanted to come up. Goodness, bad stuff come up. Uh, relationship. Uh, and see, the thing about it, when you hold stuff in, that's not being patient. When you hold stuff in, when like someone gets on your nerves or something like that, uh, that's not showing love. Because what's happening is that you are you're building, you're building resentment. You are building blessings, uh, Sally. God bless you. You are building resentment when you're holding stuff in. So God wants you to get those things out uh, in prayer. See, so many of you that listen to me, there are things in you that shut up. And God is saying that in order for him to heal you, he must know what it is. He must, he must hear you call it out. The Bible says that with the mouth of confession is made unto salvation. God wants you to confess God wants you to call it. God wants you to give it a name. If you're in a bad place, if you're hurt, if you're discouraged, if you feel weak, say, God, I'm weak. Give me strength. God wants you to give it a name. God wants you to give it a name and call it out. The Bible said, call those things that be not as though they were. So see the thing about it. They were already created, but God wants you to give it a name. God wants you to call it out. That's what he wants you to do. But also, before we go into prayer, there is a shift that's taking place in the church and there's a change that's taking place place in the church. And if you notice that in the, uh, the on the day of Pentecost, the Bible says that uh, 120 assembled together. They got together and they had all things in common at a certain point. Then when they had all things in common, the Bible says that the Holy Ghost fell from heaven. There came a rush and a mighty wind and the train filled the house. They were filled with the Holy Ghost and they were filled. And it was, the, the, the anointing set upon them as cloven. Men had cloven tongues. And the Bible also said they were speaking in other people languages. And that's the change and the shift that, that I, I was talking about even on yesterday. A language is a conversation. And the Bible says that because of the tradition of men, the word of God has gotten to a place where it's of none effect. And one of the things that I noticed that the difference is, is between 
uh, when I was a kid, like 10, 11 years old, when the power of God was really falling. And as opposed to now, the difference is uh, then their relationship was with their heart. They love God from their heart. Many of them couldn't read that good, but they could get an answer to God because they knew how to pray. See, because prayer is a conversation. It's a language. And that's one of the languages that God is speaking to his people. He's changing your language. He's changing God's people's language. And, and that language is prayer. You have to have a language of prayer. You have to have a conversation with prayer. The Bible says that how can two people, two walk together except they be in agreement. If you want to walk together with God, ah, you got to be in agreement with them. And the only way you can be in agreement with them, you got to call on them. You got to have a conversation with them. Uh, one, of the, one of the definitions of prayer is a, 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 a calling, a calling there. In other words, you're calling God to where you are and you're asking for help. It's like calling someone 3,000 miles away the moment that you call and they pick up. There's a direct connection. Today, God wants to be your direct connection. And what we're going to do, uh, and see, well, also, before I pray, I want to say this about the language of the church. For many years, the church, church people, church preachers, they've been talking church language. They've been talking church conversation. And their messages are geared toward the church. So, in other words, the church has been constantly being recycled within themselves. Nothing was coming in and nothing is going out. Uh, and see, what happens is that even with unsaved folk come in, they feel so uncomfortable and they feel so out of place because of the language. They don't understand the language. Many of them don't stay because they're uncomfortable. One of the things that church should do is make uh, the household of faith friendly and inviting. has to have an atmosphere, a hospitable atmosphere. And so what God is doing, God is changing and God is speaking into the tongues of many of the leaders and, 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 and many of the leaders and many of our lay members. And the language is, the language is going to go from stop talking about church and the language is going to be start talking the language of the world. People that are outside the church. You have to meet people where they are. And see, God, God, is, God is pulling down the cute messages. God is pulling down the mind messages, the, the mental. See, that's why the spirit of God doesn't flow like he should in this day and time. Because uh, the heart. God don't have many people's hearts in the church. He, their mind. See, their mind has become their own God. It's almost like a rehearse, a learned behavior, a learned thing. And so many leaders and many preachers and, and many lay members, they are doing what they heard. they doing what they saw. Not realizing, understanding what they were hearing and what they were seeing was wrong. Many, often, the church has been in error. The church, many of the people in the church have been in error because the church has been talking to the church. You've been talking church language instead of talking, uh, instead of talking, to, uh, instead of going into the world, talking to the drunkard's language, talking to the hooker language, talking to the backslider language, talking to the people out in the world. That's the language. See, Jesus said, the Great Commission, you know what he said? Go. Go into the world. Go ye therefore into the world and preach the gospel and compel them to come. That's not a, a message or a language or conversation in the church. That's a message in a conversation out in the world. And see, when people are in prison, see, you must go where they are and, and go where they are and bring them out of prison. And see, the thing about it, yeah, God is heaven. See, but you don't want to uh, present heaven to them in a way where it's unreachable. But you want to talk to them in a way to bring them up to where you see. You have, to, you have to teach people. The Bible says that we study to show ourselves approve of God, but also the Bible says that we study, but also uh, that we uh, uh, study to give an answer. That we're able to study to be able to uh, give an answer of the word of God with meekness and fear, exactness. Let your, sp your speech be seasoned with salt. See, the language that God is also bringing, he's bringing an a season in salt. See, many leaders in the church, they have the knowledge, but they don't have the wisdom. And the wisdom is knowing how to apply what they know. See, knowledge by itself can become dangerous. Because just like having a car, you might have knowledge of that car, but you don't know how to drive it. And see, oftentimes people, they have power in the church, but they don't know how to use their power because they're not asking for wisdom, because they're not listening and not trying to go on to know and learn a more excellent way on how to uh, maximize who you are in God. Yes, God is changing the church language and that church language is speaking, going to the world. It's time out from the church doors are beginning to open, open, to come open and go out, go out and bring people in, tell people about Jesus. Tell people about his power. Tell them that he can save. Let the sinner know that they don't have to live in their sin. Let them know that they can go to heaven. Let them know that there's a more excellent way. Now, that's a witness. Now, that's the example. Now, we are not teaching that. We need to begin to teach that our language needs to change. We need to, we need to stop beating each other up in church. See, because the world is watching it.
And they want to be a part of that. They don't want to be a part of confusion. Leaders and, and, and members are fighting and doing it and everything. There has to be a difference between holy and unholy. And see, when the church get in the line, and when church get right and separate themselves from the world and become that light and become that example, then, then the world will come in because they're ready. They are hinging. They're hinging. They want to know God. And see, if we're not ready to give them God's word, the world is going to give it to them. Uh, YouTube is going to give it to them. Rap music, hip hop, R&B, all that is going to give it to them. Pop and all that is going to give it to them. So it's very important that we position ourselves and begin to work. The harvest is plenteous, but the labors are few. It's time to change our language and stop talking about each other and talk talking to each other about what God is doing and what God is saying. And tell the sinner what God is doing. Tell the backslider what God is doing. Tell the drunkard what God is doing. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we call out the spirit of depression. We call it out right now. We give it a name. And we speak against it right now. We pull down your stronghold right now. In the mind of that boy. In the mind of that young lady. In the mind of that woman. In the mind of that wife. In the mind of that husband. In the mind of that family. We pull it down right now. Uh, the Bible says that the axe head is laid at the root. The axe head is laid at the root of depression. The axe head is laid at the root of uh, shame. The axe head is laid at the root of hurt. The axe head is laid at the root of discouragement. And also I speak against the root of the spirit of suicide. You are rendered helpless. I curse you right now. I loose hooks in your jaws. I beat back the forces of hell in the mighty name of Jesus. And the blood of Jesus is against you. The blood of Jesus go into every house. That's facing and that's fighting depression. The blood of Jesus is going to every house that's dealing with the spirit of suicide. And we, we, we speak against it right now. And we, we bind it right now. We bind it. We bind the binder right now. We bind wickedness right now. We bind hate right now. We bind discouragement right now. We bind everything that will come against God's purpose. Against God's family. Because you said in your word, God. That the gates upon this rock, the very gates of hell shall not prevail. And we are speaking against everything that is trying to come up against God's power. That is trying to come up against God's house. And we speak a word right now. We speak a word of authority. We speak a word of strength. We speak a word of joy. God send your joy in right now. God send your wisdom in right now. God send your power in right now. Because God just said in your word. That your right hand and your holy arm has gotten you the victory. In that same victory, God. God, we declare that victory right now. Every house that's been fighting depression, declare victory right now. Every house that's been, that been facing the suicidal thoughts, suicidal conditions, I raise up your flag of victory right now. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. God, we thank you, God. God, we are beating back the forces of hell. God, we are lining up, God. God, our language is changing with peace, God. God, our language is changing in unity, God. God, we're having one voice, God. And, and now that we're having one voice, God, God, bring your glory in, God. God, sweet chariot of glory. Sweet chariot of fire. God, swing low right now. God, sweet low in every house. God, swing low in every condition. God, swing low in every predicament. And God, snatch them out of their situation. God, snatch them out of that pain, God. God, snatch them out of that mindset, God. God, snatch them out of that quicksand, God. God, snatch them out of that hurt, God. God, snatch them out of that place that they are, God. God, snatch them out, God. And as you're snatching them out, God, God, bring in your wisdom, God. God, bring in your healing power, God. God, bring in your authority, God. God, bring in your joy, God. God, bring in your love. In Jesus' name, God, we pray. God, we celebrate what you're doing, God. God, we celebrate what you're saying, God. God, we celebrate your power, God. God, we celebrate your greatness, God. God, we celebrate your goodness, God. God, your goodness, God. Oh, taste and see, God. God, give them a new appetite, God. God, we're receiving a new appetite. God, we're receiving an appetite of peace, God. God, we're receiving an appetite of prayer, God. God, we're receiving an appetite of seeking your face, God. God, we land between the portion and the altar, God. And God, we're pulling down strength, God. God, we're pulling down joy, God. God, we're rising up again as a unit. God. God, we're rising up as an army, God. And God, we thank you, God. 
God, we got our sword out. God, God we're going to speak this, your word, God, in season, in out of season, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, God. God, heal that person in that hospital. Heal that mother in that hospital. Heal that baby in that hospital, in that lung condition. I see it now. Ah, we speak against it right now. God, heal up every wound, God. God, heal up everything that's been broken, God. God, bind back together, God. God, bind love back together, God. God, bind understanding back together in Jesus' name, God. God, we're going to celebrate you right now, God. God, we honor you, God. We honor you with praise, God. God, we honor you. God, we're by magnifying your name in Jesus' name, God. We magnify you, God. God, we bless your name, God. God, we glorify you, God. God, we feel your power, God. God, we feel your glory, God. God, we, we hear you, God. God, give us direction, God. God, move in us now, God. God, touch us, God. God, stop every gift, God. God, stir up every situation, God. God, stir up everything in, in the people, God, that's been laying door back. For there's a sound that's been ringing, God. And you want us to arise right now. It's time to fight. It's time to pray. It's time to magnify, God. It's time to lift up God's name. It's time to name the name of God. It's time to bless the name of the Lord. It's time for great exploits. It's time to be used by God. It's time to bless the name of the Lord. It's time to live for God. It's time to walk in a vocation where God has called you to. You know what God has called you to, prophet. It's time to get up. Evangelist, it's time to get up. Sister, it's time to get up. My brother, it's time to get up. Apostle, it's time to work now. Pastor, a prophet, apostle, evangelist, teachers, it's time to do and abide in your calling. It's time. It's time for us to come together. It's time to become a sound. It's time to become an echo, an echo from city to city, ah, from, from place to place, from home to home, from prison to prison. It's time to have a voice now. It's time to lift up our voice like a trumpet in Zion and tell the house of the, to Jacob their sins and their transgressions. It's time to come out of pain. It's it's time to come out of depression. It's time to come out of hurt. It's time to come out of despair in Jesus' name. Gotta go. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Share this. Share this. Amen. It's done. It's done. The Bible said with us two agree. As a touching anything they ask, I shall be done. It's been done. It's done. It's done. God said it's done. Healing is done. God is moving. God is going in that hospital. It's done. God is going in that bedroom. It's done. God is going in that man's mind. It's gone. God is going in that woman's mind. It's done. God is going in that kid and baby heart. It's gone. God is moving right now. I embrace what God is doing. Embrace what God is saying. God, embrace it. Well, as you embrace it, God is sending you strength. As you embrace it, God is sending you his power. As you embrace it, God is sending you his glory. And his glory is his matter. It's his mind. His essence. His weighty matter. God is heavy. Let God heavy this fall on you. Let God heavy power fall on you. Lord, let God heavy glory fall on you in Jesus' name. Amen. Do this. Do me a favor. Share this. Share this. Share this. Let me go. <laughs> God bless you. In heaven's valley. And may all God's best be yours.